was certain that I was going to find a way to bring my daughters back. So I got them a bunch of clothes and obviously they haven't had a chance to wear them yet. Little dresses. Um, they love these ones. I show it to them on the internet and a princess dress. Yeah, pretty colorful dresses that I thought for sure they're going to get a chance to wear here. Um, they're certainly too big for most of those clothes by now. And I used to spend a lot of time laying them out and just looking at them. Those are really old pictures of my daughters. My eldest is Aya and my youngest is Saida. And my youngest, she uh, here, she must have been maybe three, four weeks. When I started to read about Islam, the theology aspect of it, I guess, was always kind of harder to get into, but the, the, the social aspect of it, the rigidity, the segregation between sexes, the role of men versus women, yes, yes, at 18 somehow, that felt like that was the, the answer. You, you know, you think now of over-sexualization of kids and you think the other extreme is the answer. No extreme is ever an answer to anything. It was difficult in Libya. Many women drive, many women work. In my husband's tribe, women do not drive. Um, women do work to, to some extent, and there are typical jobs for women, right? In Libya, so you can be a pharmacist, you can be a doctor, uh, you can be a teacher and a nurse. That's about your choices of careers right there, um, generally speaking. And where women do go out in cars and stuff, they don't frequently. And some of them go out like groups of women together, let's say, to the market. But it's more rare. Typically, you're accompanied by a, a male. I remember one time my daughter asked something of her father and he told her, no, you can't do this. And she looked at him and said, it's because I'm a girl, right? My kids were young at that time, not even three yet, the eldest, but I was like, what am I turning them into? What am I doing to them, to their opportunities in the future? So um, I started to listen to TV and listen to music again and include my kids in that. And my husband was not happy. It's like a no music, no TV policy with my kids. Uh, and I, I started talking about, yeah, let's put them like it's, we can be a mix of everything. We can be a Canadian Muslim family. So no one needs to wear hijab ever again. Uh, and we can put the girls into like gymnastics and dancing classes. And on Sundays or Saturdays, they study Arabic or Quran at the mosque. And they, we can mix both and be happy. And my husband, he basically figured if, my, if we raise our da daughters in Canada with me as a mom, they're going to straight to hell. There is no chance that they will ever make it to heaven. Um, and you know the, the position of a father in Islam and the protector of his family and so it's his duty to protect his kids from me and to protect myself from me even um, so he started planning to basically uh, very cliche but bring us back home to his country and find a way to keep us there and that's what he did um, it took him one year and a half to plan in a way that I would be entirely convinced that there was no way we would go to his country and stay there like it, it, we were heading to Europe to do for him to do a PhD and all that I'm like sure let's okay let's do it and um, sure enough like he never had any kind of plans to go to France or to make it to Europe at all it was just to find a way to convince me to enter his country um, at which point he has sole decision power on my kids and even me as his wife, as a Canadian woman, yeah, I could kick up a fuss and say I'm, I'm held illegally here. And Libya would have probably done like, okay, you can leave, but not the kids. The kids are, they're born in Canada. They're Canadian citizens. And so is my husband, actually. Um, but they're also Libyan citizens by default because their, their father is Libyan. So they're Libyan citizens. And um, there is no Libyan court system that I would, would ever say, oh my God, poor girls. Yeah, just take them and go. He does what he's doing to limit his daughter's options so that they will have no other options in life than Islam. I would have brought them here so that they can choose whatever they want to do. They want to be Muslim, be Muslim. He doesn't want that for them. So he's taking them, keeping them there to limit their options to one. 
Islam. He was more generous than he had to be. He did not have to bring me to Libya and try his hardest to make me want to stay there and be a Muslim again. He didn't. Islamically, I deserved either exile or death. Usually death, but at the, at the, the most, at the, at the least, exile. There was no, you don't leave an apostate mother with, their, with her children. There's no question of that nowhere, anywhere in Islam. It's death or exile. You do not. An apostate does not keep his kids in Islam, whether it's a male or a female. So people tell me it's just a bad Muslim. No, he's not. He's a better Muslim than most I knew. Um, he's just a more devoted Muslim. So eventually my, st my husband started talking to me about traveling, me, to Canada. And I, I, the first time he mentioned it, I looked at him like, I thought maybe he wouldn't even let me out of the country. And for months, he just kept repeating, no, no, you're just, you're unhappy, you're depressed, you're miserable, and it's affecting all of us. So I'm with my husband, and we, we, weren't, we weren't even inside Tunisia yet. We were just barely out of Libya, just barely. And he took my phone, and uh, he basically told me, I, I know what you tried to do. I know you have custody of the girls. Um, I know you tried to change their names and I know you have passports for them. You have like traveling papers with just your name on them. And he, um, he took everything from my phone and deleted everything, uh, left only very few pictures uh, and told me that if I wanted to come back to Libya ever again, I had to give him custody of the kids. I arrived in Canada and uh, I debated it for several weeks and eventually came to the conclusion that I could not give him custody of the children because if there's any chance to ever bring them back to Canada to take them out of Libya, it's because I have custody, a legal custody according to Canada and thus according to most Western countries. The, if I give him custody, it, 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 according to all the countries of the world, whether they're Western, Eastern, anything, it, they belong to him. There's, there's, it's taking away any form of influence I might have over them. Uh, so I refused. Um, but the result of that is that I've been here now for five years. And uh, I haven't, I see my, I see my daughters through the internet only. I, I haven't held them in my arms. When I, I look at my situation, I blame myself and I blame him and I also blame Islam. If his book didn't exist, it would be a lot harder for him to justify in his own head what he's doing.